And one more. This is Reservoir Dogs by Quentin Tarantino. This is the uh, old. I think this is actually his, my friend said this is first his first movie. But I was looking on Letterbox and it looked like there was another one before that. Uh, came out in 1992. It's an hour and 40 minutes. Um, it's a crime story. Uh, pretty well done. Stars I actually uh, since I have the cover. Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Chris Penn, Steve Buscemi, uh, Lawrence Tierney, and Michael Madsen. Um, I recognized a couple of them from Hateful Eight, actually. Uh, the guy who plays Agent, uh, is, is they say, oh no, Mr. Orange, is uh, Oswaldo Merberry from <laughs> Hateful Eight. And then uh, the guy who plays Mr., uh, what color was he? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, B Mr. Blonde, I think his name was. He is uh, Joe Gage from Hateful Eight. Um, and, you know, it was funny. when I, Both of them. I was like, why do I know, th like, their mannerisms? Especially Joe Gage. I don't I don't know what his name and like, the actor's name is. But I was like, why do I know the way, like, the way he's moving his mouth? I'm like, that's very familiar. He doesn't look like Joe Gage in this because, obviously, this movie's, like, uh, what, 20... 23, 8, 28 years old, so uh, obviously he doesn't look like Joe Gage, that Hateful Eight came out I think in like 2014, so uh, you know, it's like 20 whatever years after this movie, but um, I was like, why do those mannerisms look familiar, and then I looked it up, I'm like, ah, Joe, uh, Joe Gage, I'm like, ah, that's Joe Gage, <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, it's a crime movie, um, it's about a, a uh, stealing diamond diamonds from a jewelry store. Uh, it's supposed to be a pretty easy job. However, it went off the rails, and it's about kind of what ensues after that. The, the you know there's some scenes of the act not not the actual robbery. Actually, no, there's no scenes from the actual robbery. The the whole movie is after the robbery. It's what happens after the robbery. It, it's how all of these. Uh, I guess thieves uh, act after this thing was totally fucked. Um, you know, one guy shoots the place up and then two of them, you know, they escape and the one guy gets, uh, literally, the dude gets shot in the fucking head. Somehow he's driving a car and then he goes blind and dies. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> he, he still drive. You guys let him drive? He got shot in the fucking head. <laughs> But he's driving. I don't know. It's fucking funny, but, um, uh, and it opens up with Steve. Well, it opens up with like a, a really long, and I, I don't know if there was like a. There must have been like a deeper meaning to this conversation, but I wasn't sure what the fuck was going on with it. Uh, I watched it twice, and I put the subtitles on to try to understand like if there was any references that I was missing. Maybe if I watch it a second time, I'll get it. Um, but I did not understand the opening scene. I thought they were actually all cops at first, but it turns out the opposite. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, this, this jewelry, uh, heist, I guess, goes south. And they're all supposed to meet up at this one warehouse. Um, the one guy gets shot. And he's, like, bleeding out. And for whatever reason, this M Mr. White, like... It cares about this one guy so much. I don't really know why. I was like, are they going to, like, kiss? Are they, like, a couple or something? I was confused in the beginning of the movie because he was, he's got shot, so he's, like, holding him and shit, and he's, like, going really close to his face. I'm like, are they, like, in love or something? Are they a couple? And then at the end, it gets really, like, close again. I'm like, what the fuck? Are they, like, are you guys going to kiss or not? Like, what? I was trying to find why they were so, like, attached, or at least Mr. White was so attached to Mr. Orange. I didn't understand why, but... Um, yeah, Steve Buscemi, who's Mr. Pink, <laughs> um, gets, like, them, Mr. White, Mr. Pink, and Mr. Orange are in the warehouse together. Mr. Orange is the one who got shot, so he's, like, screaming, and then he passes out eventually. Mr. White and Mr. Pink are going back and forth, and it's very good dialogue again. Um, they think that somebody, you know, sold them out, because uh, as soon as they got there, uh, there were cops and everything. Um, and so they think somebody sold them out, and they don't know who did it. Uh, who done it? So they are uh, back and forth. Eventually, they start fighting because Mr. White wants to take uh, the Mr. Orange to the hospital, and um, you know, 
then Mr. Pink realizes that Mr. White told Mr. Orange his name, and he gets all pissed about that, and they start fighting, and um, then, then fucking Mr. Blonde shows up, and that's Joe Gage's character, and he's acting all cool and shit, and he has a cop in his back seat, and they torture the cop, which is fucked up. I mean, they punch him and shit, and then they leave to go uh, get rid of cars uh, because they were right outside the fucking uh, warehouse. It looks suspicious. And Joe, Joe Gage, Mr. Blonde, literally cuts the fucking cop's ear off. It's so messed up. Um, and then as soon... not Could have done it before he cut the cop's ear off, now that I think about it, but... Mr. Orange then suddenly shoots the shit out of Mr. Blonde. He was, like, laying out, passed out. I guess he was passed out while he was getting his ear cut off. <laughs> he shoots the cop. Or he shoots uh, Mr. Blonde and kills him. He, it turns out he's an undercover cop. Um, and then, you know, he's like, well, why don't the... He's t the undercover cop, Mr. Orange, is talking to the actual cop who got his ear cut off. Not the actual cop, but the, you know, not undercover, the just cop <laughs> talking to him why he got his ear cut off and he's like well why don't they you know they they know about this i'm undercover and everything that the police know about is like well why don't they come in now and he's like well we can't until the basically the boss joe shows up and so it ends up <laughs> what's his name uh billy i think his name is comes in and he shoots the fucking cop and he's like what what happened to you know why did blonde die and what, what happened and then Mr. Orange tries to make up a story like where Mr. Blonde was going to kill the cop and uh, so we had uh, kill the cop and him and then run off with the money and uh, so Mr. Orange uh, is like I had to kill him and shit and then like he doesn't believe him and he just kills the cop like oh that cop who gives a shit <laughs> he shoots him and finishes him off really um, and he doesn't believe him and then what's his name Joe actually shows up and he, uh, he's like, this guy is a traitor pointing at Mr. Orange, and Mr. Orange is like, I don't know what you're talking about, and suddenly, for some reason, like, I still don't understand why Mr. White was so, like, attached to Mr. Orange, but he's, like, standing up to him, and he's like, if you, if you do this, I'll kill you, and then the other guy's pointing at him, who is Joe's son, is Billy, I think his name's Billy, um, and they all fucking shoot, and they kill each other, uh, Mr. Orange is, and Mr. White are shot, and they're, like, laying there, and that's when I said it gets all kind of weird and, like, touchy, and then Mr. Pink just fucking takes the bag and runs away, so Steve Buscemi runs away with all the money, um, everyone fucking dies, <laughs> except Steve Buscemi, and he lives, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, t it, like, the way I described it there, it didn't seem like there was much to it, but it's so much, there's so much backstories, and explaining as to how the situation got to where it ended up being. Um, and it's told kind of similarly to, uh, actually now that I think about it, kind of similarly to um, Inglourious Bastards, where it's flashbacks and then it all comes together at the end. Um, and that scene that I just described is the end. Um, so it's not a, it's not as good as Inglourious Bastards. I think it's still good. And then another thing is these aren't really my kind of movies. I really like Scarface, but I'm not a huge crime mob kind of movie guy. I'm not a huge fan of those type of movies. Um, so, you know, maybe this is to an, another person that's like, oh, this is awesome. But to me, it's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But, you know, it's like not my cup of tea, really. I enjoyed it. I did. And I thought there was some really good dialogue in there. But uh, it's just really not my cup of tea. Um, I probably won't watch it again. Maybe I will at some point, but it wouldn't be, like, recently. Or, I mean, uh, like, in the near future. Um, maybe in, like, a few years I'll watch it again. Because it's not like it's, like, two and a half hours. It's only an hour and 40 minutes. Um, and it's a solid movie, but it's just, you know, not really my cup of tea. Um, but, yeah, there's pretty pretty good acting. Um, I know the dialogue's from the 90s. It's kind of corny, especially Mr. Pink. <laughs> His, some of the things he says is just, like, downright, what? Um, but, you know, the, the biggest issue in the movie for me is, like, the ending, it kind of feels hollow, because it's like, why does Mr. White, f like, want to protect Mr. Orange with his life so much? Like, I don't understand what his affection to Mr. Orange is when they just met, and they don't even, like, he knows his, he told him his name for some reason, and, and like... If he dies, he's going to kill the guy. Who, like, I don't understand. I, just, I did not understand it. 
Like, there was no backstory of, like, oh, well, Mr. White lost a partner or something in the past, so this is maybe why he's so, uh, he's so, like, attached to this guy. It just, it didn't make sense to me, and then he died for him. I was like, what? Uh, yeah, so that, that really dropped the movie for me. But I, I, in the end, I gave it a seven and a half. You know, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty good movie. Um, I, I like it, but I don't love it, I guess, is a way to say um, but, you know, if you're into crime, crime movies, I guess not really mob movies, at least they don't go into it, if they are a mob or not, I guess, I think they are, but they don't really go too deep into it, it's kind of just a self-contained story about an event, um, and it's all good, it's, but it's just, to me, it's not great, um, so yeah, seven and a half, um, definitely recommend it if you, if that's your, if that's your thing, um, so, yeah, quick little review for Reservoir Dogs, seven and a half. Thank you.